My people, welcome back to your favorite show, You and I Talk Show with Luis Uacho. This week, it's getting so beautiful. We're taking you to a wedding, not just any wedding, Ethiopian Eritrea. All right, my people, welcome to you and I. Today on the show, very beautiful, Laba Mengistab. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for being me. here. Thank you. In Demenesh. <laughs> Dena. <laughs> <laughs> that is greeting you in yes. your own language. Yeah, thank you. Wow, Ethiopia. Let's let's talk about Ethiopia first. Mm -hmm. um, Ethiopia is such a beautiful land with so many beautiful people, and you have caped your culture, and this is what you're showing us today. How is it? Uh, because we live in a society where they think that all Africans are the same, or all Africans are black people. But within Africa, they're very diverse. Very diverse. Very diverse, yeah. very different. Yep. Each country, each land has their own originality. Mm. What is it about Ethiopia and Eritrea that is so fascinating and so beautiful? Like, what is you guys' mm -hmm. secret? <laughs> um, you know, I think um, every culture has something unique to contribute. And um, what I love most about our community is that we're always in conversation with each other. Every, everything, every aspect of our life is um, talking to each other, keeping people updated. You know, you laugh together, you cry together, and you know, you eat together. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, I really appreciate that. Nice. Yeah. So today we're talking about weddings, mm -hmm. and you have a very special way of having your own weddings, mm. your own tradition, yeah. uh, and you've started a, a business yeah. out of this. Yeah. How, this, how did it, it all start, and why weddings? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I started uh, getting involved when my sister was getting married. She had a fabulous, you know, 1,000 guest two-day event. And um, I, you know, it's my baby sister, so of course I started helping with the planning, and um, I started to realize how challenging it was to source everything um, because a lot of the products came from Africa, and um, our weddings have a different structure. You know, it's a thousand guests. I know a lot of people might think that sounds like a lot, but basically you're inviting your community. Yeah, and all the of whole the, village. <laughs> the whole village. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and uh, also, yeah. in the African culture, yeah. really, a wedding, everybody is invited. That's Even right. if you don't invite people, people will show up. You know, how yeah. do you manage that? Uh, I've seen on your Facebook yeah. page where people don't even say RSVP. Oh, you yeah, know, they I don't see. RSVP, but they still show up. You know, how do you deal with that? As a planner, it, it is challenging. I mean, it, it, most people, um, I think, you know, when we plan our weddings, um, you you do accommodate for that extra wiggle room, but um, you know, we think about like our church communities and our um, you know our faith communities and our school and work environments. So basically, once you figure out all of the people that you know and love, you you end up at a thousand people. I see very quickly. <laughs> so um, yeah. That's that's a wonderful thing to to have all of the people you love and and that support you um, at such an important event for your for your life. You know? I see. Yeah. And so, how big is the Ethiopian and Eritrean community here in Vancouver mm -hmm. versus the rest of Canada to allow you that huge of an event? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, people do travel from abroad. That's very common. Um, so I would say about 30% of um, guests, you know, typically travel from outside of town. But Vancouver, you know, we have about several thousand, yeah, people in, from our community here. And, um, and there's about uh, half a million uh, Eritrean and Ethiopian people in Canada and the U.S. Uh-huh. Yeah. So maybe you know the difference between Ethiopia and Eritrea, mm. but to the rest of us it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> what is the difference? Is there a difference? <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there are two separate countries. Uh, Eritrea was um, independent as of 1991. But, I mean, 
we, we are sister nations, you know, we have so much in common and um, especially when it comes to, um, to what, planning a wedding, we definitely have things in common that uh, it's helpful uh, to, to have one website, you know, to, to guide you. That's, that's what I wanted to create. I it, see. To make it easier. Does uh, Eritrea and Ethiopia speak the same language? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, the national language in Eritrea is Tigrinya and Arabic, uh, two, two national languages. Uh, but there are nine major ethnicities within just Eritrea, and then Ethiopia is um, Amharic. Uh huh. Yeah. But all Ethiopians speak Amharic. Uh, I mean, there's, it's there's almost um, over 100 million people there, so it's it's very diverse within it as, as well. Mm -hmm. But um, it's national. It's the language. most spoken language. Most spoken. Yeah. It's also an ancient language. Yeah. You have your own writing. Yeah. You have your own calendar. Yeah. Like, which year are we right now? I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it can be confusing, but there's 13 months in the um, Ethiopian calendar, so it, it just ends up being a different year, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So is there a special season for weddings? Um, I mean, in the traditional uh, time, you know, in North America, we have the summer, traditionally. Um, in, um, you know, Africa, it would be our January. So, um, you know, it keeps me busy all year. Oh, okay. Yeah. So weddings in January, weddings in the summer. Yep. Because I'm thinking it's beautiful in Africa mm -hmm. in January, right? Yeah. So it's not like people worry about the snow no. and the, and the no. cold. No, they're just um, figuring out um, different uh, religious calendars. And um, yeah, that's usually what it's based on. All right, yeah. okay, so we'll just take a short break and come back and keep talking about it. You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back with the beautiful Laba. So this, are you married yourself? I, I'm not. Okay, so you didn't even get to organize your own wedding. Are you going to organize your own wedding? No. No, I would, I would hire. You would hire somebody. Yeah. Your little sister who you organized the wedding for, she better come back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll remind her. All right, so we're actually going to watch a clip and watch uh, a beautiful wedding, and then we'll talk about it when we come back. That was your beginning. Mm -hmm. This is how you began. And then, so how did you find the passion in that? I mean, a lot of people would be overwhelmed, but for you to turn it into a passion and then turn it into a business, yeah. you know, how did that go? Absolutely, well, I, I think it's, um, I, realize, I started realizing, um, you know, these weddings are really um, important for the African community. To, as, a, as a mechanism for us to keep our heritage alive and our community together. And, you know, when, when you put it that way, then it's, it's quite easy to be passionate about it. It's, it's about people and bringing people together. Yeah. yeah. And then you found the need. A lot of mm -hmm. people wanted to do their weddings. But so how long before does someone contact you when they want to get married? Like, what's the preparation? Mm -hmm. um, our, um, I've, I've, 
have we have found that um, it's usually between two two year or one and a half year engagement. So the preparation cycle is pretty long for our communities, and um, which is good because then they they reach out right away and um, and you know we can collaborate and get ideas and yeah it's it's right at the beginning. I see. Yeah. And then also there's also the money issue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it kind of looks expensive. <laughs> Um, yeah, it it can be. Yes. Uh huh. So, what is the cost of weddings, like generally in Canada, and then what is the cost of a great Ethiopian wedding? Mm -hmm. One thousand guests we've established. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, a typical like the um, the average for Canadian weddings is about uh, twenty five thousand dollars, and um, you know we have found that. Our community weddings are, you know, between forty and a hundred. Nice. 100, People go all out. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's not just a it's, a, it's not just a wedding. It's an opportunity to um, express yourself and bring the community together. So it's it's really an important rite of passage. I see. Yeah. And then culturally, so you have a party over two days. Yeah. Two days. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are these people staying at the same place? Do you also organize where people are going to be staying? Yeah, we try and help them out with hotels and uh -huh. yeah. Wow. Absolutely. And then are you dressing people? Um, as definitely as the planner, you would help the uh, bridal party coordinate because um, you know in African weddings, everyone wants to be coordinated. They want to have the same material to really uh, demonstrate to all the guests that they are part of the the same party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And then um, what about the people who show up without being invited, <laughs> like we were saying? Everyone huh? is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Uh -huh. Yeah. Or do you like, uh, then in order for people not to show up, you put it at a secret location? <laughs> secret location. You don't location. tell people where it's happening. <laughs> um, I haven't heard of that happening. Uh -huh. <laughs> I see. And, and so culturally, um, who is paying for the wedding, mm -hmm. like in the culture? Who is paying for the wedding, or how are they sharing the cost of yeah, the wedding? That's a that's a really great question because it is different. Um, you know, in some cultures, it's uh, the parents of the bride, or you know. And so, what I have found, especially in the modern, um, you know, Eritrean Ethiopian community, we really um, team up together, and um, pe different. Parts of the organizing committee, like you, your family, and your close friends, each of them will take a project, like mm -hmm. one thing that they can pay as their gift to the oh. couple. But is there something that is, for example, reserved to the groom family, and you're like, this is the groom family, they're taking care of that, and this is the bride family, they're taking care of that, like the separation? Traditionally, there was, uh -huh. yeah, definitely. There were, um, you know, back home, there's uh, when the, the Family that's hosting the event would pay, but uh, everything's, you know, a little bit more modern now. So, uh -huh. yeah, it's 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 mostly like just sharing the costs. I see. Yeah, and then also um, these uh, brides and and grooms, how do they hook up? Are you also arranging for the hookups? Uh, um, like how how do they hook no, up in the first place? For sure. I mean, <laughs> th that's the wonderful thing about being such a close knit community. So you grow up knowing or um, being in touch with community members all the time um, and and that's usually how people meet each other through family friends and through family okay yeah. somebody says yo I saw a bride over there <laughs> let's go check yeah. her out sure and then they come and they uh, ask your parents for permission um, I mean everyone's you know it's modern times so people connect online and um, but yeah, it's usually through through our personal relationships. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. We'll take a break and come back and ask you a few more okay. questions. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu .com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back, still talking to Laba. So the, how's the pressure on you to get married when your little sister <laughs> gets married before you, you know? I mean, how, oh, what goodness. are the parents now saying? Oh, did my mom send you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
No, I, I don't feel any pressure. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, my sister found an amazing um, gentleman and it was the, the right person and the right time for her, so I'm thrilled for her and yeah, I I don't know. My, my family is pretty cool. We, okay. No pressure. So how many husbands have you turned down uh, already? <laughs> you know, I'm sure None. they have been sending you a couple of husbands <laughs> and you've been saying no. Not, no. That, I, not that I know of. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are the criterias of um, getting married in uh, Ethiopia or mm. Eritrea? Are there like some family requirements? Like your family is gonna say, we don't want anybody from that village, mm. so you better find somebody from, you know. Mm. Uh, I mean, you know, traditionally um, it, was, it was different. But, um, you know, nowadays, I think just like every family, parents just want their children to be happy and, um, and find someone who's, who really cares about their child. Yeah. yeah. Daughters and sons. Nice. Yeah. Um, how do the Ethiopian community keep their culture and their traditions and, and their originality, you mm -hmm. know, their own uniqueness alive? Because you have so many uh, outside Ethiopia, mm -hmm. in Canada, in the United States. Mm -hmm. Like, how are you guys keeping your own thing so you are still surviving and you still have this mm -hmm. and it's based on your own culture? Like, how are you? continuity yeah. keeping that? That's a great question. Um, I think it starts at the home, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, you know, speaking, you know, your mother tongue at home is, is part of it. It's something everyone can do. It's very accessible. And um, just staying in touch with each other. That's, that's always how, you know, how we keep our customs and traditions alive. And, you know, the coffee ceremony is some, something very important to us. So, um, you know, performing that every day with the people that you care about and, um, yeah. And, you know, I think with all African countries, with a lot of, you know, um, you know immigrants to Canada is, uh, we travel back home quite a lot. And so, you know, the, the communities in Africa and Canada are so fluid. Uh, people come here, people go back there. It's, it's all part of it, yeah. Okay, so it's yeah. uh, a little bit easier to have the authenticity mm. from Africa still alive over here because you get to travel. Mm -hmm. So um, what is it about coffee? Because coffee, you are actually the nation of coffee. Mm -hmm. There would be no coffee in the world if it wasn't for Ethiopia. Yeah. So what does coffee mean in your culture? Because I know it's more than coffee in Absolutely. your culture. Absolutely. It's, um, it's a daily uh, tradition. Uh, you know, you uh, perform it from scratch. You know, the raw coffee beans um, are, you know, cooked uh, at the coffee ceremony. And it's really an opportunity for the family to gather and, you know, friends to gather and, and catch up, you know, and, and really just. Uh, See how I heard it, that it, 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 was, it was kind of spiritual, you know, roasting mm -hmm. the coffee. Yeah. And I also heard that um, coffee is actually fresher and alive when you roast it mm -hmm. and then you uh, do it right yeah. away. You drink it right away Absolutely. instead of like keeping it and storing mm -hmm. it. Like the original way of... It's uh, so delicious. Yeah. Oh, I haven't tried that. Yeah, that, I'll that one. over. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> So, um, so this is a way of people sharing. So, are children allowed to drink coffee? Because I know when we were kids, they're like, "No coffee for you." Are Ethiopian kids allowed to drink coffee? Um, you know, I think my mom always like let me have like a tiny little sip, uh, just to to keep me involved. Uh -huh. Yeah, with a lot of sugar. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, see, I see. But it's it's you know it's for the adult. It's um, you know an opportunity for them to gather and and connect with each other and. And yeah, like you said, um, it's a spiritual, it's a family activity. I see. Mm -hmm. So do, the, do people do it like after eating, uh, in the evening or in the morning? Is there a special time for this? Um, I, I know that now we do it in the evening when the family can gather okay. because everyone's working. But it's, it's a way to honor your guests as well. So it's, you know, you come over um, any time of the day, then we would we would perform that ceremony oh. for you, yeah, to honor you. It's a whole ceremony. Yeah. 
Very nice. Yeah. And then you also have a very special drink that I went and got <laughs> from an Ethiopian restaurant, the Tej. I got it on Commercial Drive, a very nice restaurant called Gojo. Gojo, yeah. Yeah. It's fabulous. They got great food. I go there sometimes. Yeah. Do, don't tell my other friends because I haven't taken people there mm. yet. <laughs> but I'll Good. take there. I don't yeah. want my uh, friends to hear that I've been going there without them. Okay. <laughs> Cool. But um, you have another drink called uh, Tej. Yep. So what is that drink and what role does it play in the ceremony? This is the the party part, you know, <laughs> when people now are trying to get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Tej or Mas is um, it's a honey wine. Yeah. So it's. Do you know how to make it? No, it's it's a it's a delicacy. I mean, even like my mother is fabulous at that and. Um, it takes then I should visit your mother then. <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't even Yeah, know I, I would invite you, you over to my mom's house. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> That's where Where I'm the going. food is good and the, the wine is good. Okay, yes. okay, okay, um, okay. Yeah, it's, it's very, um, very delicate to make. Um, it requires days and days. So, yeah, it's, it's How does special. someone know when it's a good tej or, or a bad tej? Is it supposed to be sweet? Is it supposed to be a little bit bitter? Mm -hmm. And can somebody actually know how much alcohol is in there? It's made quite professionally uh, now. It's made just like um, all of the the, the wineries. Uh, there's winery in California as well, and um, but when it's made at home, it's just like all of the craft breweries that are um, very popular right now. It's it's similar to that. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Let's take a short break and uh, come back. And I wish this was. Uh, <laughs> I wish this was Tej. <laughs> I will be back. You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back. We're almost uh, finishing. Um, so... How is your business right now? And where would you like to see it going? Mm -hmm. What is your hope? What is your vision for it? Everything's going really well. Um, we officially launched last March and um, it's, you know, growing so quickly and um, the community is, uh, is really ready for this and uh, the North American market is ready to diversify mm -hmm. in the wedding industry. So I'm really, really pleased with the direction. Do you have a uh, competition? I've seen on Instagram, for example, Nigerian weddings, uh, or is it like they're so different uh, from oh, you yeah, there's, that they're not really your competition? No, they're not my competition okay. at all. We, um, I'm always looking to partner with other uh, cultural uh, wedding planners and that sort of thing. It's it's the best thing for the industry because uh, diversity drives innovation. So the more we can uh, collaborate together, the, the better it works out for the customer. Nice. And I've also seen you work with uh, people who are not Ethiopian or Eritrean. Yeah. How does that go? And do you go according to their thing or do you bring your thing to their thing? Absolutely. It's a collaboration. It's a partnership. So. Um, we work together and, and see what the best ideas are for that event. Uh -huh. Yeah. So who are your favorite people to work with uh, in terms of grooms and brides? Uh, what kind of personalities mm. do you like? I mean, I know you have to be politically correct, <laughs> but what are your, some of your favorite people that you have worked with? How were they versus mm -hmm. like the hard ones? Yeah, I mean, the, the hardest uh, customer to work with is one who doesn't know what they want. Ah. Yeah. I want this, and then they change their mind, and I want something completely different. So I don't mind, um, and I love working with creative people who, who want something big and elaborate. Um, and then we just work together to make that come, yeah, that dream come to life. Uh, so that's, that's my favorite. I see. Yeah. Have you, ever, have you ever had uh, people, they're not Ethiopian or even African mm -hmm. at all, but they want to have an Ethiopian? Absolutely. Way? You know, that's. Um, most, I would say most, but like uh, an, a growing number of my new customers are actually um, non Eritrean Ethiopian people, um, where neither the bride or the groom is Eritrean or Ethiopian. Yeah, I and saw a video on one of your sites, and yeah. I was like, 
They don't look Ethiopian. Well, it's <laughs> it's such a it's such a fabulous uh, culture that anyone who uh, is interested in having a unique wedding can just incorporate a few elements, just the dress or just the food. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Um, so, what about uh, one of the things that I see the the wearing of the crown? Yeah. Uh, what does that mean? And then the the, the robe, yeah. the kind of black, takaba. very nice. Oh, you call it takaba? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does that mean and where does it come from? Absolutely. So, um, you know, it, it it's based in the church. That is something that happens um, traditionally. And, you know, it's it really represents that regal uh, theme in our culture. And so the bride and the groom are kind of like the, the king and the queen for the day. So the bride and the groom get crowned, the uh, king yeah. and queen. Um, okay. So uh, you mentioned the church. Um, Ethiopia was Christian before Christianity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have like an ancient uh, culture. Mm -hmm. So what kind of religion are you following right now? Are you following any religion or do you have your own traditional uh, thing going on? For sure. There's so many different uh, religions practiced. Um, in Eritrea, it's almost exactly 50% Muslim and 50% Christian. So it's it's really a diverse, you know, religious yeah, framework. But um, yeah, even the Orthodox community is, yeah, so the Orthodox community is what you're referring to. And um, there's, there's a lot of different um, types of Christianity present. And yeah, every, everything's there. And it's a very dynamic society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, what kind of uh, groom are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, say it on TV. Oh yeah. <laughs> In order to uh, get to your wedding. Oh yeah. 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 Um, and I'm thinking it will be like five thousand people. <laughs> oh no. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. Just someone who's nice. Someone who's very caring. Uh huh. Okay. Um, oh, I've also noticed that uh, Ethiopians like to marry within a Ethiopians. Uh, so is that a thing for you or can you go outside your culture? You're asking all the tough questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think, you know, again, it, it, the most important thing is to marry someone who loves you mm -hmm. and really uh, appreciates who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll go to each other's weddings. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laba, for being here. Absolutely. It's been great, and we'll keep in touch. My people, go to a wedding. It's fun. I'll invite myself to one <laughs> of them one of these days. <laughs>